Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Star Switching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue Raven. My wonderful guest tonight is Selene Tari Apataka. And uh, wonderful to have you on board tonight, Selene. So happy you're here. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, thank you for yeah. Thank you for joining us. And so I think we're going to cover. I think it looks like we're going to cover the sacred feminine. This uh, that sound like a good topic. Yeah, of that's one of the things I want to talk about, and also how it heals the sacred masculine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, you know, there's been a, a lengthy suppression of the divine feminine that dates back thousands and thousands of years. That. We're not sure where it began. I was having that discussion with Laura Eisenhower tonight, but um, one of the areas I think it began at was with the goddess Isis, who was an ancient Egyptian divine mother goddess of healing and creativity and nurturing. And she was revered throughout the world thousands of years ago. (coughs) And, um, you know, she was equal to the pharaohs. The, by the way, Egypt was one of the few countries in the world that held women uh, uh, equal to the even to the pharaohs. So um, they did not suppress the divine feminine, which is one of the reasons why Egypt is one of the least repressive Muslim countries in the world, is that it has an ancient history of revering goddesses. Um, and so Isis was the key goddess of the time, and she married Osiris, who was part of the royal bloodline, her brother, and they had a son, Horus. And Osiris was murdered, and um, she had to heal him. And these We don't know exactly all the details of how these things went down, Solaris, but the main thing is that she had to use her divine feminine to heal the fractured male energy. And she was allowed to do that. She healed and brought Osiris back to life, and as a result, it was a healed union as well. <clears throat> and so for that great feat of bringing him back from the point of death, she was revered throughout the world for many centuries. Uh, even the Romans used to spread stories about her, many stories of healings and power that she displayed throughout the world for a long time until the Christians came into the picture. And then the Christians slowly began, they saw the divine feminine energy as as threatening to the power of whatever power they were trying to establish. So they began to erase those stories from history. And one by one, um, all the goddesses were struck down. And there were many other goddesses, the Grecian goddesses, the Roman goddesses, too, you know. And and by goddesses, you know, I don't mean like there's a a god up in the sky that is... um, supersedes God, we're talking about div- people that are divine enough to be able to heal themselves and to bring power to earth. And we all the, they were all struck down, all of them. And we all had to answer to the Catholic Church. You know, everything got minimized down to the Catholic Church. And this was when the all the sacred feminine became completely suppressed. So it was around the time of Constantine and, and those emperors where they no longer allowed any discussion of the sacred feminine or of the powers of the female. And the the sacred feminine energy embodies intuition, creativity, um, nurturing, and, and all the deep mysterious powers that are inherently feminine. Um, You know, we're inward and the male is outward and you can't have one without the other. (laughs) So we need each other. And so instead what happened was this horrible long period of suppression and the women being executed and everything so that men could roam the land free and have total dominance and conquering power. And that's where we're at today. And that's the Kali Yuga. And um, we're coming to the end of the Kali Yuga. As we can see, uh, what's happening is the rise of the feminine and it's pretty dramatic this past year wasn't it oh yeah very much so now there's definitely uh polarity consciousness but also it seems like there is a there's there's definitely a collision between the male and the female and the divine feminine and a war on the divine feminine just coming from like what's been going on with all these assaults going on with the women in europe um by these you know whatever you want to call them they're coming through the invaders so literally um that's a that's a that's an assault on the divine feminine the women are under attack at least they were in europe and they were denying it so 
Um, Are you talking about? Um, I'm talking about all the Muslims that came over uh, and just started raping all these women. Um, you know, it was just absolutely disgusting, and yet it was being shoved under the carpet, and um, nothing was being done about it. So once again, the assault on the divine feminine is also the assault on the on the female to begin with, and uh, it's very interesting how that's playing out on the timeline. But yet now you're seeing here um, in America, people are actually rising up, and the females are actually rising up, which is very interesting. Well, and we saw the Me Too movement last year start and i was like finally finally we can do this and um it's sweeping the world one mm -hmm. by one each country and i was blown away to see the, all the women about a week or two ago marching in the streets of south korea like hundreds of thousands of south korean women were just absolutely enraged and they were all holding up the sign me too and they had dozens of stories and they were standing on steps and podiums everywhere talking about it and apparently you know some of the biggest leaders in south korea were all pedophiles and rapists and so they they were calling out their names and they they all lost their jobs and one of them committed suicide and he had been apparently molesting women for his entire career wow so um i was shocked to see it hit the asian world because they're usually not the first in this department but South Korea has, is becoming increasingly progressive, so uh, that that was shocking. And then they had one in, in, I think it was Italy, where all the women were raging through the streets also with big Me Too signs. So this isn't just an American phenomenon and all the men can laugh about it or whatever. This is a global phenomenon that is going to sweep the world and even it'll get to the Arab world eventually too. It's already happening. In fact, they're just now allowing women to drive cars in Saudi Arabia. And that's, oh, they said they would never let them do that. It's just like, oh, come on. It's insane. And it's absolutely insane. What about, it's just like the dark ages, you know, that's what I mean. Everybody has to step up. They have to step up to the higher levels of consciousness. And when there's higher consciousness, there's none of this duality with the male and the female. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're going to put women down below and you're, yourself up high, then the, your your culture is designed to fail. Mm -hmm. It's completely impossible for you to have a successful um, culture. You might think you're having one, but you're going to find diseases and rapes and secretive things going on when you suppress one part and let another part do what it wants to do. And it would be the same if the women did it to the men, you know, so right. we're not yeah. we're not going to be doing that to you guys. We just want you to step aside and let us stand in our power. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the thing is, is that when the female is subjugated like that into a profane state, then it's harmful to the sacred masculine. Then he becomes a lower being because she has allowed herself to be lower. Correct. In that she lets herself be a prostitute or she lets herself be a seductress or whatever. I mean, that role was forced on us, but for many of us, women it's difficult to come out of that role because that's how we survive mm -hmm. and if you have the strength to come out of that role you will lift all the men around you mm -hmm. and that's when the sacred masculine can return to to be who he is a man who protects his wife and who um or girlfriend and mother and sister and who protects them and feeds them and nurture and gives them what they need and then in return she gives them everything Mm -hmm. Everything that you could possibly ever want is given to you freely from the Divine Mother, from the heart of the Sacred Feminine, when you treat her sacredly. Mm -hmm. Because we are the fountain of abundance. We are the fountain of creativity. But we haven't been allowed to have our own power. It's, it's taken. Our gifts are taken from us. Mm -hmm. So now sure. what we're asking is that you open the door to our power and then you won't, you're not going to go without. We're going to give it to you freely. It's absolutely going to be given to you freely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is going to be very healing for the sacred masculine, Solaris. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's what's coming. Yeah, I think they both need to be um, transcended to so, on so many levels. And I, what comes to mind is the Godhead. We're really dealing with the Godhead of the God and the Goddess. Um, the higher self over soul, the higher self is a Godhead. And, and I believe that male and female really literally are those things when they transcend it to the highest level. So it's really about honoring that within, honoring the God within, and honoring the Goddess within, a male or a female. Yes, it is. Exactly. The God and Goddess within, the divinity that each of us has. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a centuries and thousands of years of programming of the wrong 
um, false matrices that we are not worthy, we are not worthy of our divinity, we're not worthy of love, we're not worthy of our divine mission, so we have to keep coming back over and over in many lifetimes to relearn or unlearn and wake up. And, and supposedly there was a time when our brain was not two halves, when it was one one um, whole brain without a corpus callosum in between. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's one of the things that I've read. If that was true, then there was no separation between the male and the female and the right and the left. Well, I think if, that's just a, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's really um, the male and the female. I don't really think it's a, a thing with the hemispheres. In my opinion, I think there's a balance between the hemispheres naturally, and that sometimes people get over um, overworked with one side of the brain. But it never really resonated with me about the uh, male and female on the right and left side of the brain. But I don't know why. But I believe in balancing the hemispheres for sure. Yeah, what, I, what I'm saying, I'm I'm not sure if you grasped what I was saying, that there's supposedly a time when the brain was did not have either hemisphere, where it was just one round ball. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, neither do that. I, but I read it somewhere that, you know, mm-hmm. in some spiritual literature, and I thought, I wonder if, if that's what happened to us thousands of years ago, mm-hmm. is well, that somehow the brain devolved, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Into, into something less than what we are capable of being. Well, that's another thing, too. You know, it seems to me like I think they were saying that the brain is actually shrinking nowadays, and that's concerning, if that's the case, um, due to, I believe, some of the transmissions and frequencies they're using that are man-made versus natural frequencies. So it's possible that things have been morphed and, and uh, altered deliberately. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. Of course they have been altered deliberately. And we don't know how far, how bad it is. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I just I just know that um, in the course of my own awakening, a lot of my mental powers have returned. A lot of my divine powers have returned. My emotional stability has returned. My mental state of mind is calm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I was a basket case for a long time, not surprisingly enough. Was that like PTSD or... Yes, I have very mm-hmm. serious PTSD. I mean, I still have PTSD. It's kind of forever, but it's not like it was, mm-hmm. you know, where little things would trigger me and I didn't know why and I'd have panic attacks and hyperventilate and um wow. Sometimes, yeah, I would I can remember hyperventilating and having a panic attack in the dentist's office once and almost having to leave and I had to pray and meditate to get through it. Nothing you know, and really no reason for it other than the receptionist was really mean to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe it's your and psychic that, energy picking up on that on an empathic scale. Well, she was being very rude, and I, I could feel this panic attack coming on. And mm. those were old symptoms that I don't have anymore. Um, when I have memories, occasionally I'll still have a memory, then I'll have a panic attack sometimes with it. But not really severe, I mean, just mm-hmm. a, a couple of minutes, you know. Right. It's a, a feeling that comes and goes, or I don't react to it anymore. Mm-hmm. But, right. you know, the programming was very, very painful and difficult and traumatic. So um, I had to release anguish from my body, so much anguish mm-hmm. from my body. Right. Yeah. It's amazing what one person or, or multiple persons can do to somebody, you know, with a situation like that, with whether it's MKUltra or or any kind of a, a programming. It's just un- unfortunate that they went that direction. You know, I can go back to pro- Project Paperclip and prior to that, it's just so so sad that these people have to do those things and go through these corridors of trying to manipulate like that. Well, it's amazing to me that anybody would even enjoy anything like that. I mean, when mm-hmm. I think about how dark and sadistic these programs are, it's like, is that really fun for you? I can't, mm-hmm. I don't even, exactly. yeah, there isn't any part of me that understands that. Yeah, it's I like, agree. I, I could never, I can't even squash a bug, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and I agree with you. It's almost like they're they're trained as Manchurian programs to do what they do, and they have their handlers and programs and operators, and they never break free. And then they become entrapped as just an entity. Yeah, it's like, well, once their own souls are so compromised that they're acting out of whatever entity is directing them or whatever false matrix is directing mm-hmm. them. Yeah, it's, and it's really unfortunate because um, we're all so divine here. We don't mm-hmm. need to be nasty, cruel beings. We can all be living in peace and harmony if we want to. 
Exactly. And that's what I like about it. And that's one thing I like about the Reiki too, is that universal life force energy. You know, it just, it doesn't have any judgment towards anyone or anything, but it's the flow of the cosmic design. That's the bottom line. And I think that people forget that so often. So hopefully they'll, they'll start to remind themselves of that. And that's what I love about Reiki. Well, it's a fabulous well, we, system. Go ahead. It is. No, it's all right. Go ahead. Are you no, I was just say saying more? it's a great system. No, that's fine. <laughs> it's a beautiful system, and, and Reiki, it doesn't get enough credit. I'm always surprised at, at how ignored it is in um, literature. You know, some of the great books talking about healing programs don't often mention Reiki. And I know that Reiki has received a really a bad rap because I should probably talk about this for a minute because most people don't know the history of Reiki. But Mrs. Takata was the grandmaster, and she learned from the, the grandmaster before her was Chijiro Hayashi. Um, and she was the sole grandmaster sent out into the rest of the world after World War II. All of, all of the original masters were, came from Japan. And um, there were only three prior uh, to, well, Dr. Hayashi was trained by Dr. Yusui, and Dr. Yusui mm -hmm. is the original one. So yeah. she was the third. And um, she was tr the only Western one and the only female. And they st he still chose her to be the Grand Master because intuitively he knew that Reiki was going to be lost and needed to be taken to the West. So she single-handedly brought um, Reiki to uh, the entire Western world. Well, um, there are different strains of Reiki that emerged out of that, that were some that were false. And um, really, there's just Yusui, Shiki, mm -hmm. Ryoho. That's it. The mm -hmm. Reiki, the natural system of healing called Reiki, named right. after Dr. Yusui. But people came up with all these other, you know, chakra Reiki and Kundalini Reiki and oh, sexual wow. Reiki. I didn't oh, know yeah. about that. See, I I'm, I'm a Yasui whole... too. I, I was initiated into the Yasui system a long, long time ago, and I love it. Yes, go ahead. Well, there's probably a hundred different systems now. People just make them up, and then they wow. call themselves a grandmaster, and they add something to it, and then boom, they create a little, a little cult around it, and. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't want to put disparage other people, but it, it's like you can tell when you're working with people like that that the power isn't there, right? Because yeah. it's it's rooted in the ego, mm -hmm. and um, that was the sad thing that happened after Reiki was that after Mrs. Takata passed away, as a lot of false teachers arose, and some of them are are well known, and I you know I don't advise people to go to those kinds of teachers because they're invested in in their own egoic lineage mm -hmm. you know you need to you need to be humble yourself and to accept the the transmission of energy from a divine master mm -hmm. that can't right. be done over the internet it can't be done you know with putting a new name on it totally. it has to be or, done in the presence yeah. of, a, of, of a real master and you know what else i really don't like mm -hmm. are the online classes I, I really have an issue with that i don't know how people can get any type of real certification with an online class. I just don't get it. But who knows? <laughs> you can know. <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? I mean, because I've, not, ta I've taught before, and I know you need to have your students in the room. Uh, it just no, doesn't make any it, sense to me. It's but, not a who knows. I just want to make it very clear to who's ever listening. You absolutely get nothing from an online class. I mean, you certainly don't get an attunement. You might learn a few things about Reiki. But right. that's just it. That's how the teachings get diluted. Correct. Is you read a book, you see somebody on the internet, and you suddenly you're a Reiki master. Well, th seriously, think about it. If you had to have brain surgery for a tumor, would you want your brain surgeon to have taken a course over the weekend and maybe never operated on anybody, but he's going to give it a shot on you the first time? Right. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. Reiki is a very serious healing technique that requires practice. Mm -hmm. I practice my Reiki for 30 years before I became a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. I was initiated at first degree almost, let's see, well, it was more than 15 years before I took second degree. And I practiced oh, every single day. Mm -hmm. I gave myself a Reiki treatment every single day. Mm -hmm. And I gave animals and plants Reiki treatments. And That's as great. a result, I developed a power. And so then when the day finally came, when I became a Reiki master, I was ready. 
Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that I got, boom, one, two, three on a Saturday afternoon in somebody's living room. It was something that I developed over spiritual surrender and study and discipline over an entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. And that's the way, that's what Reiki really is. It's a powerful system of divine healing. It's not only is it divine healing, Solaris, but it is um, a path to spiritual awakening. Mm-hmm. It truly is. You know what's really sad too, Selene, is that I noticed that people can download the symbols now on the internet. And even if you don't have any initiation, people just grab the symbols off the internet and think they can. Well, I guess they get it to some degree through osmosis, but it's not a true initiation. So no, I've noticed and it's that's very going on. dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's I very, agree very because they dangerous. don't know which ones to use and how to apply. But I'm not going to tell them. But you know, it, it just gets weird. Yeah, I, I see that too. And I see a lot of people, it's one thing to have your own signature and your healing work. I get that. But it's another thing to have, you know, this watered down thing that's going on and, and that does uh, ruin the quality. And it also kind of taints the initial system. So, yeah, I can see that. And that's why Reiki is not revered like Tai Chi mm-hmm. or Qi Gong, right. because all these people stepped in and did falseness. And you know why? Because this is, again, the false matrix, the dark ones stepping in. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you when it started, you know, there's a couple of, uh, there's no, really no other way to talk about it except by stating it. You know how we went, I don't know who, who taught you, but we were told not to reveal the symbols or to Correct. reveal anything that had to be passed from master to student. So mm-hmm. I never revealed any of that until I became a Reiki master and started teaching people. But then the book, um, I don't know what was the name of the book again, I blanked it out because it's so horrible. Um, the Essential Reiki by Diane Stein. Well, Diane Stein was an uh, investigative journalist, and she, you know, you have to agree when you take Reiki, you have to promise your master that you're not going to reveal it. So mm-hmm. she was willing to make that promise to her master and then betray her master by mm-hmm. revealing the symbols. And for anybody who has read that book, the main symbol in that book is reversed. Oh, so I not read only, it. Yeah, Go well, ahead. when I looked at it, I was horrified. I thought, this is how mind control works. Mm-hmm. Is that you have, if you're going to state 10 facts, but you want to change someone's mind and create a false, something false in their mind, you put nine correct facts around one lie. Mm-hmm. So she wrote a whole book of interesting immaterial that's really very good. The rest of the book is really very good. And right smack dab in the middle of that book is a, is a incorrect symbol that can mm-hmm. destroy a person. So that symbol, you know, is the main power symbol. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's not the way it's done. It's the exact opposite way. Now, to, in once I saw that, I intuitively knew that, that, that this was an attempt by the dark side to dilute the power of Reiki. Mm -hmm. And from that day forth, people started reading that book and other books and putting it on the computer. And at least half of the people have the symptom, the the symbol reversed. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so people would come to me and say, this is how I do Reiki. And I'd be like, and where did you learn that? Oh, I read her book or somebody taught me, but she read Mm -hmm. her book. And I'm like, yeah, well, you can do some very serious damage to people by Mm -hmm. reversing that symbol right and so i'm here to tell you that that is incorrect what is in that book it's completely incorrect there's no justification for it and it needs to be tossed in the trash i wonder why maybe maybe you should have addressed the the author about it and told her i'm not going to i'm not going to get into a debate with uh, a compromised person who's Mm -hmm. most likely compromised with some kind of negative energy or entity i mean why would Mm -hmm. she do that you go to your master, you make a promise, and then not right. only do you break the promise, but you reverse the symbol. There aren't any masters teaching the symbol that way, except for false masters. Mm-hmm. So exactly. she, she had to have learned it properly, but then reversed it. Mm-hmm. And so that tells me that she's compromised in some way. Mm-hmm. And I, I doubt it was an innocent typo or something weird like that. No, like it's, it's drawn. Deliberate. It's drawn. It's the entire okay. symbol is drawn reversed. Wow. And so, you know, it's like you're going to teach an entire generation of people a symbol that that reduces a person's power and life force. Exactly. Well, where else is that. that coming from but the dark side? Yeah, very interesting. All about control. Also, it reminds me, it's parasitic, you know. 
Sounds like they're trying and, to suck the life force out of the target or whoever. And what I'm saying is that from that day forth, they tried to suck the life force out of Reiki. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for, if you're going to learn Reiki, you go to a legitimate teacher. I mean, there's plenty of legitimate teachers out there. Mm-hmm. I'm certainly not the only one. But you want to make sure that they really know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And that you spend a little time researching and checking their energy and really discussing it with various different people before you do it. Because it's if you get somebody that teaches you all the reverse symbol, you might as well go to a, a witch or a warlock and learn from them. Well, because, I'm a good witchy poo, but yeah, you know. <laughs> well, you know what I, mean. what I mean. But no, no, that, I get it. No, it's true that, that people have like, to have pure intent and they have to use the, the information with wisdom and have it right. Yeah, I'm not talking about, I'm not, I didn't mean it to. I know, uh, I had to, I had to about chime you. in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a mystical that, scientist, but I also have a background in the craft, but go ahead. I'm just saying that you you can get dark magic that way through mm-hmm. people who are teaching you wrong, you know? Yeah, they are. I've met a lot of bad people, a bad, a bad magicians, bad craft practitioners, bad everything, bad healers. I've met healers that actually turned bad. So, and you have to exactly. ask what compromises these people. You know, I've always kept my, my templates pure, even though I got sabotaged and harassed and inducted into that warfare program. But nonetheless, a lot of people out there don't. I mean, these people... They go bad, some, and I think it's the ego. I think what you hit on earlier, these people have some kind of an ego going on where they're almost envious of anybody who shines brighter than them, or they don't want them exactly. to have the same thing to me. So I don't know. I, I, I see it all the time, though. I've seen it. Well, I, I hold. No, go ahead. No, I was just saying they need to use discernment when they're looking for a teacher. No doubt about it. And I hold Mrs. Takata in the highest, highest um, esteem. Mm-hmm. She is my teacher. She's my mentor. She saved my life. She was a very humble individual, a very pure soul. And she wasn't perfect, but she was a perfect Reiki teacher. Oh, gosh. Yeah, and she lived with you. That's fantastic. Yeah, they. she blessing. would stay with us for a week at a time or so, you know, and, and teach the class. And she did that several times a year. And, and, and uh, how lucky was I to have that? I was going to say, that's awesome. Well, yeah. I think this was a divi- divinely ordained journey. Totally. My journey. Yeah, there's no coincidence. And, yeah. And that's why I can't even be mad at my father because it's like he, he showed me this is what the shadow looks like. Mom showed me this is what the light looks like. So I chose mm-hmm. to use the side of light to heal the shadow. Mm-hmm. And he was my first patient. I mean, I worked on him a little bit. He didn't make any progress in this lifetime, but... Um, he did take Reiki from Mrs. Takata, and he used to ask me to give him a Reiki treatment because mm-hmm. he knew that I was really strong. And he would say to me, you know, or to my mom, she walks with the grace of God. There's something special about her. So he always wanted me to work on him, but then he'd go out mm-hmm. and be a nasty dude anyway. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some people choose not to change. They enjoy the dark. Right. Yeah, it's an addiction almost. Yeah, well, it's like, Go for it. Watch it. Mm-hmm. Watch it consume your your soul. It does because it, it will. Yeah. yeah, it's a self destruct sequence. There's no doubt about it. As far as I can tell, you know, it's just there's no way out with it. It's just like we were talking about the black hole earlier. That's exactly what it is. It's yeah, a it's dark an, spiral it's, to nowhere. And it's it's called in in Buddhism they call it the hungry ghost. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It was never enough. My father had plenty of money. He had everything he ever needed, but it was never enough. And all the people that I meet that are struggling with that kind of insatiable desire are are connected to the dark even in various levels of it you know they may not be full-blown mason like my dad but people who never get enough money and they never get enough sex they never gonna get enough food they never get enough entertainment whatever it is Mm -hmm. it's it's the realm of the hungry ghost right where you aligned yourself with an empty dark hole that is bottomless and you're going to get fat you're going to drink yourself to death or whatever it is you're going to do because you're not aligning yourself with divinity. Mm-hmm. When you align yourself with divinity, your needs are met and you're filled and you don't need to overdo it, you know? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. There's a there's a nice, what you were mentioning earlier, there's a nice blissful peacefulness about it too. You're more serene. There's no turbulence. And that's the one thing I love about being centered and connected to what I call source because it's that feeling. It's that feeling of being loved and feeling of just being at peace, you know? So. Well, I had, you know, my own connection to the hungry ghosts was my eating disorder, which was born out of the sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. And so I, I spent a lot of years binging 
until one day, you know, um, I had I had to throw up every single day of my life because my eating disorder was so severe. And sometimes what would happen is my eyes would bleed. Mm. And this one day I had a very bad episode of vomiting. And by that time I had already been in um, Overeaters Anonymous for seven years. I'd al- I was already second degree Reiki and I was well along in my healing journey and I just got down on one knee and I, my eyes were in really bad shape after that particular episode and I was concerned I was going to lose my eyesight from the daily throwing up. Mm-hmm. And so I got down on my knees and I begged, asked God to lift this from me. I said, I don't need this anymore. I'm not being abused anymore. I'm not I'm not even binging anymore. I wasn't binging anymore. I was mm-hmm. already an Overeaters Anonymous. I was done with all the behaviors, and uh, I just needed it to go. This was an, a reaction I couldn't stop. The vomiting was something that was involuntary. Mm-hmm. And I made a sincere prayer to God, and I said, I know that you can heal anything. And I ask you to, t- to take this um, particular part of my affliction away. Because it was connected to, I was bulimorexic, so I would binge, mm-hmm. vomit, right. and then starve. And I did that for 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I said, I'm ready for it to be completely lifted. I don't need it. And that was the last day I ever vomited. That was a long time ago. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it lifted just like that. And I do that every every time now when something has reached a breaking point. It's like, I don't need this anymore, God, you know. You you can handle it. I can't handle it anymore. Yeah, give it to the universe. Yeah, no, give it to source. Yeah, I agree with you. Totally agree with you. Let that go. Well, that's the thing is we don't have to carry all this stuff if we don't want to. There is a there is a recycling, <laughs> so to speak. No, yeah. God has a has a plan for us that's really quite joyous, you know. And I'm starting to manifest that. I mean, things are coming mm-hmm. to me out of the blue. Somebody offered me a piano recently, and I used to play piano. I was. I studied classical piano for 12 years growing up. My mom was a concert pianist. And um, I haven't been able to play the piano since I got, practically since I got divorced, because I haven't Mm -hmm. lived anywhere where I could have one. (laughs) Oh, wow. But I got a piano about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be tuned, but I can't wait to really start to play it again. And that came, it was a gift, you know, out of the blue. Somebody just gave me a piano. I never thought Mm -hmm. I'd see one again <laughs> that's great yeah magic so, happens. you know <laughs> all the, the universe is bringing things to me that that knows that i would enjoy and that is life is becoming increasingly effortless mm-hmm. and it, everything was a struggle in the beginning but not now that's wonderful i'm so glad to hear that yeah you're just going with the flow and how is everything out there now in california i know we were talking about the me too movement a little bit and we don't have to get into your me too but i, I did want to say um, do you think Me Too will eventually morph into them coming out and talking about the MK Ultra because that's really the big beast behind it all? Yes, exactly. I'm glad you're bringing that. Um, we started to talk about that tonight, and we got sidetracked, Laura and I. But yeah, I think the Me Too movement, especially starting in Hollywood, is very significant because it's just the top layer of the MK Ultra. Um, what most people don't realize is that there's a lot of MK Ultra people in Hollywood. Uh, Roseanne Barr and Corey Feldman are the only two stars that have really come forward. And I I don't know about any of the rest of them that have said anything. So I don't want to expose people that, you know, harm anybody's reputation. So those two are the only two that have openly spoken about it and said that it's going on at a very um, deep level, especially Roseanne. She's really talked about it openly. Yeah, she has. Um, But, you know, what I know, having done the research for my book and everything, is that there are handlers in Hollywood that have their sex slaves, and they have for a long time, and that a lot of the people that we revered as movie stars were actually mind-controlled slaves. You know, mm-hmm. Marilyn Monroe was a mind-controlled sex slave. Mm-hmm. She was taken out of an orphanage and was um, taken under the wing of one of these Satanists. I think it was Anton LaVey. And, um, yeah, she was a star, and she was an amazing person. But they picked her because of her goddesshood, you know, and turned Mm -hmm. her into one of these sex slave type people. And there was quite a few others. Um, The handlers that, I don't really want to name their names because I don't know Mm -hmm. if their relatives might 
come okay. forward. But, um, you know, perfect example of someone who's been charged and not found guilty was Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. So there's more to that story. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you get 200 people, 200 women come forward and then you hear people say, oh, they were all paid to do it. Oh, come on. These are very reputable women, you know, mm -hmm. uh, famous women. Uh, some of these women were 75 years old. And, Jeez. you know, this is he's part of that group. Mm -hmm. And right. so this this is a global network and it extends into every government and in every high place of power. And the MK Ultras are there's the sex slaves that are look good and then there's the children that are sacrificed and you and I know about that mm -hmm. and when you really pull the ugly scab off of this Me Too movement you're going to see MK Ultra, and then underneath and now they have the TV show Stranger Things so obviously mm -hmm. disclosure has begun that's soft disclosure right Right underneath Stranger Things and right underneath MK Ultra is child ritual sacrifice Mm -hmm. And you're going to see that there are tunnels underneath Hollywood and Washington and New York and everywhere where children are trafficked and sold. Mm -hmm. And they're uh, used in rituals. Some of them are killed and some of them are kept as sex slaves. A few escape. And every so often you hear a story from one that has escaped. But mm -hmm. I think that's probably what happened to Madeleine McCann, you know, and the British girl that was kidnapped and... Most likely, John Benet Ramsey was a child sex slave. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, she was a little beauty queen. So they, right. pick, they pick those kind of children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's because they believe that innocence has power. So it goes back to divinity. The, mm -hmm. a, an innocent child is divine. Just like you and I are divine and everybody else in the world is divine. And so those that prey upon us and are parasites have lost the ability to see their own divinity. And so they go searching for a child or a, a kind-hearted soul like me to prey upon, to take away the goodness of that person. Mm -hmm. yep. And th this is what we have to fight against. And this, some of it is, is not redeemable. Solara, some of it is too dark to redeem. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's disgusting. So, I mean, the stuff they do, the reentrainment, the way they, they traumatize people, and I mean, the tactics associated, even with children. I can't imagine a kid surviving um, hardcore traumatic um, type of technology like I was exposed to. I can't imagine a kid going through that and growing up and, and being normal. It just isn't going to happen. So, and that's just that, you know, the technological interface I talk about, but. Well, it's, that's why my sad. story is such a miracle. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Not very many people could have survived what I went through, mm -hmm. seriously. But they are out there. But most of them are suffering. You know, if you did survive, you're, you're probably, you could be an addict, you could be an alcoholic, you could be in a hospital or a mental hospital or, or injured in some way or disabled in some way. And... Um, if that's your situation, step forward and let some of us help you. Mm -hmm, exactly. Because find There needs to be, what I'd like to do is train some more healers to be able to deal with all the mind control survivors that there are out there. Mm -hmm. And they're out there. Oh, there's gosh, there's so many. Living there. Yeah, it's unbelievable how many people have been put through some kind of a program. It's yeah, I, I would guess that there was, you know, when I did the research for my book, Excuse me, I take a sip of water here. All good. When I did the research for my book, I found in the congressional records, there were two CIA directors. First, Alan Dulles, who was an extremely evil man. He was the first um, CIA director and who probably worked with um, Joseph Mengele and those people. And then um, Stansfield Turner, who might still be alive, and he'd be like 98 or something, Mm -hmm. um, both of them came forward and admitted that the MK Ultra uh, programs were real. So Alan Dulles, I think, became the CIA director. It used to be the office OSS, and then they changed it to CIA, like after the war, like maybe 1950 or something. So he was the first CIA director, and he's the one who allowed the Nazis with the paper from Operation Paperclip to come in and start the MK Ultra programs. 
And then came um, a couple of other guys somewhere in there. And then Stansfield Turner, I think, was the CIA director in the 60s, I believe. And then somewhere in the 70s, he testified to Congress when they finally discovered this was going on. I mean, nobody could even believe it was happening. Mm -hmm. That they were actually experimenting on children. And at that time, they estimated there to be 50 million children in the 50s and the 60s that had been experimented on. So they're my age now. Mm -hmm. And um, he testified that it was real, and then it went on, and that, um, but that it was over, or some one of them said it was over. I don't remember which one. And it's not over, and it's still Mm -hmm. going on, and there's more and more and more of them, or we wouldn't be having a TV show about it. And then we wouldn't be having young people like, you know, the Disney children and other places where the MKUltra is going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, It's really important for people to realize that this is an integral part of the CIA and of the underbelly of the dark matrix of our society and of the of the rest of the world. It's going on in all of the Western nations. Yeah, it's insidious. Well, it's gone black. And the thing is, it's funny. Oh, we never we stopped doing that. And then they just went black with it. You know, it was undetectable. They had unlimited budgets. and, And then, of course, it went into more of a morphing process with specific corporations, which are involved with artificial intelligence and then it goes into the more high-tech stuff which is just as insidious so. it, yeah, it's like an octopus with multiple tentacles mm-hmm. isn't it yeah it's disgusting and it's scary it's very scary and then it's become like a ritual in our society because some of the things that we treasure like the super bowl which is a lot of fun you know there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with the super bowl but it's it's a gathering point for luminaries and the wealthiest of the wealthy from all over the world. So you can count on the fact that there is a child sex slave market. Um, they they estimate that somewhere between ten and thirty thousand children are bought and sold at the Jeez. Super Bowl every year, and they have some location nearby because it's you know whichever city is hosting the Super Bowl, they find a slave auction underground building somewhere. And then they they do a slave auction because the the rich all have their sex slaves. They're not every rich person, but those people who are involved in that dark network are, mm-hmm. and and so they they have to do it secretly. And so that's going on. And some of us are here to to heal it. And mm-hmm. um, it's 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 going to take a lot of us stepping forward. That's why I have to talk about it. You know, it was right. very scary to talk about it at first i didn't know if i would survive talking about it Mm -hmm. but i found that lots of people stepped forward to tell me that it happened to them once i started talking about it that's very uh, true yeah that's a catalyst you know so if you can do it so can they and i think that's a good thing they need to talk about this they need to communicate it and people need to be arrested bottom line yeah and that's not my job you know it's like i can't do it all i thought a lot about it like what's my role Mm -hmm. and my role is to Help those who step out. You know, let let the policemen there. There's good people. You know, there's the white hats out there. There's good men and women in in the FBI. They're not all bad, and there's good men and women in the police and law enforcement industries in different places that are trying to stop this and that are arresting sex traffickers and that are um, getting the Satanists and bringing them to justice. This is that moment in history when it's all happening. We're going to look back on this. One or two hundred years from now, the people living will say, wow, that was a really gnarly period, wasn't it? Because mm-hmm. it'll yeah, be over. Good. It'll yeah. be over. And we will return to innocence, Solaris. We will. I promise you we will. Because I've seen it. I've, I'm here before you to say that I have reclaimed my own innocence. I'm like a virgin again, you know? Seriously. I mean, it's my energy is clear. That's I'm so, wonderful. Yeah. So grateful to God and I'm so proud of myself that I did this hard journey that I could give back to you all of you the truth, the wisdom and the healing and the love from my heart mm-hmm. that it, it, you can be there too. Right, and don't give up. That's the whole thing, you know. Yeah, exactly. And don't let them bring you down. Don't let the SOBs bring you down as we say because mm-hmm. they'll try. There's no doubt about it. But yeah, are you going to write a sequel to your book? I certainly am. I've been thinking a lot about it because mm-hmm. I know my that book is long and gnarly. You know, it's 542 pages. It's sort of like the master book. Mm-hmm. You know, someday there's going to be um, 
Mind Control 101 and MK Ultra 101. It'll be like a university of healing, you know, and mm-hmm. there will be courses because people, this is very intricate stuff. You really need to understand how they mind control you and how to be deprogrammed because right. I've deprogrammed myself. And there, there needs to be instructions on this so you don't fall into those traps. So that book to me was in my mind like a um, the master instructional manual that could one day be a textbook for a group of courses. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm what I'm going to do... So, Laura, see, I'm just waiting for my abundance to kick in here. <laughs> the miracle's on the way, by the way. I know for sure that good stuff's on the way. Yes. Um, is I'm going to make a series of instructional, shorter books that that help people in little chunks so they don't have to do it all at once. Because it is a lot to swallow. The book is long and it's intense. And in, the, in that next series of books, I won't have my story in it. It'll be... Here's where you go, and here's how you do it, and that kind of thing. And I think I'm going to write um, some other stories. I'm also a novelist and a screenwriter. So I, I can say to you right now, I'm writing a, a movie about my life. So hmm. wow, I'm That's hoping that awesome. that gets produced. <laughs> Let's mm-hmm. hope so. Exactly. Well, it needs to be out there. You know, they need to have the real data out there instead of everybody's version. That would be a, a good idea. There's no doubt. I like the idea of the the books and uh, the solutions. You know, you write about what you've been through, and you also write how you were able to create a solution, and that's very important. So well, that's, I think that's people need it and take it in small bites. You know, right. yeah, totally. I it's, agree with that. It's pretty overwhelming when you have to go through something as big as what I went through, and not very many people can make it. But mm-hmm. if I can spoon feed a little bit so that you can go a little more. Uh, slowly on that journey, maybe it's more palatable, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. So I encourage everybody to do that. And also, what about your TV series? Let everybody know how to listen to your or see your television series. Yeah, it's an online TV station. It's called NaturallyBetter.tv. And I've, I've had a show on there for a couple of years uh, called Heal Yourself Now. I took a hiatus as I was traveling through Bali. I went through a, a massive, incredible experience in Bali and, and, I had some more awakenings while I was there and some more initiations. So everything went on hold because my computer died while I was there. So when I got back here, I started the shows back up. And um, Heal Yourself Now is available at naturallybetter.tv online. uh, That's the name of the show, Heal Yourself Now. And I am a presenter on, on that station. If you look at the, it has a list of presenters. I'm there. Salani Terry Apodaca. And then tonight was the first show of my new show, Beyond the Matrix, where I'm talking about issues other than just healing. And I had Laura Eisenhower on tonight. I'm going to put that up. Mm -hmm. And that I haven't had a chance to even listen to it yet. I went straight into this show. We finished one one minute before. and um, Out of the wire. So I'll be putting that up soon, and you can you can listen to that, and I'll be posting those on my Facebook page, and um, you know, just follow me on Salani Terry Apodoc. I'll be posting that stuff on Facebook. Awesome. Are you on Twitter or no? Yes, I am, but I can't keep up with everything by myself. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't do Twitter. I was just curious. A lot of people do, but I find it too much for me. I just like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to follow who's. Who's talking to you and who isn't? You have to check mm-hmm. it and read down the list. If you get a lot of followers, it's impossible to do. You have to have a person to manage all that. Or something so, about, yeah, no kidding. Wow. For me, I just I want to concentrate on creating a healing platform that's really um, manageable and available to the common person, and that will include books, maybe some video. Oh, yeah, I'm starting my YouTube ser- series. You know, I've got the satsang with Salani on Facebook. I've got the TV shows. I'm going to put my satsang with Salani as YouTube videos as well. Instructional videos, short instructional videos. It'll be like 10 to 15 minutes so mm-hmm. that people can take me in chunks. So you oh. can go to YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, Salani Divine. I may have to get another one just so that it's easier to remember. That's my old name. Um, I like that. And uh, thank you. And uh, you can, you know, though you can listen to, I'll be talking about all these things and just helping people get better. Awesome. Uh, It's it's not just about getting better. It's also about awakening. It's like the divine voice is coming through me. 
I never know what I'm going to say. It's just whatever spirit is moving me to speak. So I'll be delivering information that's coming from the source. I'm one of the divine mothers that's here to awaken this planet. And um, we talked about this in this last show I had with Laura. And I said it for a moment earlier. But the divine mother is descending right now to earth. And as she descends, she's going to sweep everybody clean. She's going to purify everybody and the healing has begun and it's going to continue and it's going to get more intense so so let me be one of the voices you hear and that explains what's going on it's going to get scary Solaris it's going to get scary because as you said the matrix is breaking down the distortions are there look at people seem to be going crazy all these shootings Mm -hmm. and everything and people are getting a little bit unhinged right so you need to have a calm, stable voice in the middle of all this. And I can finally finally say that I am a calm, stable voice. I wasn't always mm-hmm. as I went through my healing, but I am now. And I can, I can hold the lantern up high for all of you folks and just help guide you through it. So join me on YouTube or join me on Sundays at Satsang with Salini. Perfect. And I want to thank you so much. I know we're almost out of time here. I have to thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to interview you. And it was a wonderful show. And I hope people take advantage of who you are and what you're doing here because you're radiating so much beautiful energy for healing and enlightenment and plus helping those who have been through traumatic events. So thank you. And everybody Please reach buy out my to Salani. book. Yeah, Please buy her my book. book. Emerging from the Matrix by Salani at Amazon.com. Yeah, it's excellent. It's a very um, awesome book. And I encourage everybody and I to love you. And we I, love I you didn't too. say that enough. I love all of you. I've got more than enough love to spare, to share with all of you, especially Solaris. She's such oh. a love bug. I adore her. Well, I love you too. And I'll tell you what, you're the only one who can really help me on that uh, intuitive, emotional level because I get very, very steel-like. So I know you have that steely exterior, but yeah, I've got I the see armor that on. little heart beating around. It's in still there. there. It is. So I, I got you. Did. I got it out last weekend, didn't you I? You did. That's why I want everybody to tune in. You guys have to tune in and hear hear Selene and experience the energy because it's for real. And that's why I have you here and I just adore you too and love you and I love the work you're doing. So once again, it's thank you. and stronger, Solaris. I just wanted to say I, I can feel the love increasing excellent. in my soul and in my heart. Yeah. And you, well, it's you're radiating strong. that. Your, your, whole, your whole entire um, system is just light. It's a beam of light. Oh, it's thank beautiful. you. It really is. And um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. I know I had a little glitches here with my Skype, but I guess it's okay. So um, stay tuned for Shiny Side Out, by the way, with David Junger. And Becky, coming up next is Sally Wanchelet with her wonderful show from Down Under, Shiny Side Out, which, of course, I believe they're discussing Nazis and occultism. Mm -hmm. That should be a very interesting show, kind of dovetailing into where we've been. Oh, those Nazis. Yeah. What are we going to do with the Nazis? All the residue of the mind control, but it's getting purged out. It's getting cleared out, and everybody's getting a reset and deprogramming. And, of course... That's the whole idea behind what your work is about, deprogramming. Definitely. And we're going to deprogram you and then reprogram you back to love. Guess what? You're just a ball of love, all of you, and you just didn't know it, did you? That's right. And one quick thing, we have about two minutes plus or minus here, but when you do your work on people, you're using the energies to deprogram. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go through any type of a walkthrough of their where they've been emotionally. Do you do any regression work on them or no? Yes, I do. We didn't okay. even talk about that. Yeah, I yeah, do we'll soul have to do regression. Okay. Soul retrieval, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that, that's there also. So that's always nice to yeah, do. Yeah, I have very distinct treatments that I do on people. Very good. And do you find that most people need a soul regression? Yes, lots of people do. Okay. And we go in sometimes into past lives. We go into the Akashic Records and we pull out. And by the way, if you're working on some karma, you have to live it out, you know. You have to accept your karma, whatever it is. You can't avoid it. But you can mitigate it. There are things you can do to mitigate it. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I always so like the idea. With that. Excellent. And I like the idea of the Divine Ascension Blueprint, where you have your blueprint, and then you just reset the blueprint, or you change the parameters in it. What, do you, what is your impression of a Divine Ascension Blueprint? Or are you familiar with those? The Divine Ascension Blueprint? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'll tell you. you. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I think we come with a blueprint. And I'm going to talk about soul mapping and how to help people map out their blueprint in the future. Perfect. Okay. Well, we're going to have to stay tuned for that one. You'll be back for sure on that. Thank you again, Salani. It's been wonderful to have you on board. Everybody, Alrighty. thank you so much. And take care. And God happy is blessed. Om Namah Shabaya. Love you. Om Namah Shabaya. Night. Night, everybody.
All right, I love you. Love you, love you, love you. Are we still on? being foreclosed people working two three jobs just to put food on the table and still drowning in debt don't get me wrong this country is founded on great ideals and principles they've all been ruined at the banks open your eyes to the banks that are robbing you you know who my favorite president was who Thomas Jefferson because he saw all of this coming and tried to stop it. he fought the banks JFK too, and they killed him for it. The banking institution is more dangerous than an army, he said. He also said that every generation needs a revolution, Jimmy. The American dream is just that, just the dream. War is a continuation of politics, only by other means. Politics is a continuation of economics by other means. This is our bank. This is our war, and this is our plan of attack. Banks have become an essential threat to our democracy, so consider this justice. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the Internet. Please help support this station so this battle can continue forward. Revolution Radio! is the people's war. It is our war. We are the fighters. Fight it then. Fight it with all that is in us. And may God defend the right. Warning! Warning! We've got to stop us! They're going to kill us all! See how the trouble you've started? Be they the government, be they industry, be they organized labor, be they anyone, or human beings! When the operation of the machine becomes...